so, yeah, funny picture. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to start with a question. What do you hear? Just raise your hand. Oh, all others, all others are developers. Come on. <laughs> okay, not so much. Uh, so others are just developers, DevOps, or just interested in the testing. Just who, who are interested in the testing? Just raise your hand. Come on, interested. <laughs> okay. Uh, so everything I will talk further will be just based on my experience. So actually, uh, they said that they will provide tomatoes in case you will disagree with me. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I said is, or what I will say that it will be based on experience on leading uh, teams. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, so just from the beginning, who am I? Uh, I have a very... I uh, had a very d different projects. It was a technical uh, project. It was advertisement technical project. Uh, it was e-commerce as well. Uh, so all kind of for projects I was involved. And my favorite, uh, my favorite penguin from Penguin of Madagascar, uh, Madagascar uh, Kowalski. Yeah. Uh, so. Actually, uh, the idea of this presentation is to show the difference of when you are working on a big project and you, when you are working on a small project. Because I believe uh, there, is a uh, there is a difference. There, is different, uh, there are different approaches of working on a small project or on a big project. <laughs> so the difference uh, actually just the same as different versus uh, a small hut and uh, just part of the city skyscrapers and so on. So uh, just for example, if you have uh, just small uh, website with maybe just uh, with a small backend server and you don't need to use Selenium, you don't need to use uh, Java code for automation uh, tests, you need uh, at least ma uh, some manual key you will need the record replay framework just to record uh, clicks. But it won't work for enterprise projects just because, okay, you have uh, 30 thousands of tests. If you will try to repeat them manually, you need 1,000 of people and you know, it's very hard to hire. Uh, so let's proceed. Yeah, the, uh, the other problem related to a big project is not only about sizing of uh, sizing of a uh, test, but it's more about uh, cost of mistake. For example, uh, one of our client, Macy's, it's just classical e-commerce. You can buy shoes, you can buy uh, t-shirts, and so on. And uh, this is the sales of this uh, shop. It's uh, 24 billion of dollars. And you know, for example, if you uh, if you broke sorting. So there was a story actually just several years ago, just before Great Dynamics came to, uh, e uh, to, to this e-commerce. And uh, they had broken sorting, they had reversed sorting. Just uh, everyone used default one. And uh, for, somehow, for some reasons it was reversed <coughs> and just during several hours before they realized they have broken it, uh, they've lost several million of dollars. So uh, when you, we are talking about real enterprise, we should understand what, what the cost of each mistake. Okay, let's somehow define what, it, what is enterprise. Just, this is actually only my opinion and this is really, the, uh, should be discussed. Just, it should be like 20 developers just on the same project. Uh, because uh, if for this case, you will should care about branches, you should care about uh, continuous integration and so on. Uh, you should have at least 10 keys. Actually, uh, it should matter how many keys you have because uh, any mistake can cost a lot. 
a huge amount of legacy code because uh, no project came from nothing. So we have a lot of, uh, all enterprise projects have a lot of legacy code, legacy tests, sometimes it's thousands of tests. And uh, two months to understand uh, at least some logic of a product. Uh, so for example, uh, this is actually uh, uh, the problem that uh, you cannot just go and write some code inside. You should understand how it works first. So just funny picture to compare the difference we are between manual key and uh, uh, key in enterprise project. Uh, my idea, it's only mine actually, uh, that in enterprise, uh, in enterprise project you should choose your orientation, you should choose the way your technology you are using and you should be an expert in it. Uh, in spite of uh, when you are just on a small project you should do this, uh, everything. I mean deployment on production, I mean testing, I mean reviewing some code, I mean everything, uh, de deployment environment and so on. Uh, but in case you are in a team, uh, you have a fully, uh, fully oriented uh, team. So you have uh, API testing, you have uh, UI testing and so on. So just to define what, what the way uh, you are going to test enterprise. Of course you should have UI testing because every enterprise project should have at least any UI. Uh, backend testing, uh, web services, pipeline testing. Pipeline testing is kind of uh, when you uh, check into just for, it's mostly related to microservice architecture, when you check just several services together. And of course performance. Uh, actually for some projects we have a performance continuous integration and it's extremely good to understand which uh, which code makes uh, the product uh, faster or worse. And what about technology? Actually I can tell only for grid dynamics. Uh, actually this is my proud of big data testing. So recently we created some big data testing framework. Uh, anyway, uh, we already, uh, in some projects we have behavior driven testing. So we have some BDD frameworks, uh, it's Speednet, it's Cucumber, and Gbehave. And uh, we have full stack of uh, enterprise technology. And uh, you know, this, it's really different from what well, that you want to use in just in a small project. And uh, the next topic is, okay, uh, I'm just started as a QA. I'm doing, for example, manual key. I'm doing some automation key. And how to grow up, how to, uh, how to be a senior, or how to uh, just to be architect after. So actually, uh, just uh, I've chose, uh, I chose four directions. One is uh, technical, uh, technical skills, uh, because in every team there should be a cool Java some kind of Java developer or I don't know Python developer who will be uh, who will be proud of writing uh, test frameworks because uh, in enterprise every team needs to write your own framework because of uh, customization of uh, of every enterprise project. Come on, everyone uses its own stuff. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, one of the way is uh, to, uh, I don't know, for example, Java, you will learn uh, some generic stuff and so on. Uh, and you will be good uh, in it. And uh, most of the task will be related on build, uh, to building frameworks. Maybe sometimes you still test or you are still writing some, uh, some tests, but uh, you will get more tasks related to coding. Uh, the next one is analytical skills. Uh, analytical skills uh, is more about real testing uh, and less about actually technology because uh, you will be interested in a business logic of a product. You will be interested in a, uh, understanding of what 
uh, of what the logic is changing by each uh, pull request and so on. Uh, the next one is kind of new, is DevOps skills, and this is about testing environments. Uh, most uh, most of pro our projects uh, require some working with in uh, testing environments because uh, not all of our customers providing good in, uh, good infrastructure for testing. So, for example, on a recent uh, big data project, we created. Uh, the framework that uh, runs Amazon Web Service, uh, Amazon uh, Web Services uh, virtual machines, and deploys everything on it, uh, like Hadoop, Storm, and so on. So, for example, you for learning DevOps skills, you will need uh, Puppet, Vagrant, uh, a lot of Bash, unfortunately. Uh, and of course, manager skills as kind of accumulation of uh, both of these three, but still it's a different, uh, it's a different uh, skills still because uh, it's very hard to manage conflicts between IT guys. They are very interested in what, we are, what they are doing. They are very uh, stubborn, so you know, it's uh, very hard. So actually my idea is that you really should choose because uh, you cannot be good in everything. You should choose what skills you will be grow and uh, what skill you will choose uh, to be a senior engineer. Because for example, we don't have a senior engineer that will do all, all of this stuff. Just we have huge amount of key. I don't know, no one who will go good in all of this stuff. As for me, I'm just, uh, with the whole my life I've spent on API testing Backend, uh, backend testing and so on. So I have, I know something about UI, and but it's very few. Uh, so I believe it's time for questions. Anyone? <laughs> yeah, it was obvious. Uh, sure. Uh, how, how about uh, is it okay to do uh, UI and uh, API testing in parallel? Uh, yeah, actually some, some guys are really cool enough to work on a par in parallel on a both directions and sometimes they do. Uh, but uh, actually the main thing is, uh, for example, UI testing is uh, always changing uh, just because of UI is changing every time. And if you are just switch for one year, uh, to a new uh, to API testing, and after that came back to UI, you will see absolutely different technologies, and you will be surprised. You will spend a lot of time. So just uh, to save your time, uh, we recommend to keep the one direction. Okay, but just if you have a project and you do an API test, so you can do a smaller portion of UI testing. Yeah, sometimes. Mm, actually, an enterprise project doesn't contain something small. Okay. <laughs> That's why, uh, for some reasons, uh, yeah, actually, this is a good question because uh, there is uh, sometimes even a small project, uh, the, there should be a really senior guy who will connect API testing, UI testing, but this is not the main business of, uh, of large companies. Sometimes it's uh, just internal projects that, that will require just uh, some QA, and in this case we will be happy to have just one, uh, well, one man ba uh, band uh, QA. But in, uh, just in a regular case we don't have such cases. Okay, yeah. Can you repeat that? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Again? So I only have worked in uh, small teams. Uh, and I don't really see what is the advantage of managing and working in a large team. So what do you say are some advantages of having a very large team, a very large application? Oh. Okay, uh, I need it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so good question as well. Uh, there is not no real 
advantages or the disadvantages. Uh, it's an absolutely different orientation and it absolutely depends on the people. Because for some, I believe for some people they really want to be kind of independent, they want to be a one-man band and they don't want to be involved in a, uh, in a team and they want to test just from the beginning to the end uh, uh, test the full pipeline. Uh, so I think uh, the main advantage of uh, grow in a big uh, team is that you uh, can focus on specific technology. Especially as for me, I hate to test UI. Just it's unstable, it's painful, it's, uh, it looks like it's dummy, uh, dummy work, but it, it doesn't work. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm happy to test API because I can focus on technical stuff. Uh, so actually this is more about possibility on fo of focusing on specific stuff and also this is a possibility to, to have a team because if you are alone you can, uh, you should communicate with the developers, with customers and so on but still you will, ha uh, you will be happy to, uh, to talk to folks that the same, uh, have the same work, something like this. So this is kind of personal advantages. Uh, I can say something about salaries. In most cases, salaries are higher for professionals so directly oriented for specific technology, uh, for a specific uh, kind of testing. Uh, but it's not the rule. But in most cases, uh, just specific oriented uh, case are um, better paid. That's it. Any other? Have I answered your question, firstly? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Any other? Oh. Okay. So, yeah, we have very funny stuff. Uh, just in case you can contact me, I just put it Instagram. Uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, it's in Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually, the next, uh, the next one will be Lilia. Uh, she is presented here. You can see here. Uh, so let's give her microphone.